welcome back to another video. What is up, my name is Stephen Flores and welcome to Stephen Flores Travel. As always, I hope y'all are having a great week and have a great week ahead. For today's video, we're gonna be talking about something that I think is on a lot of people's bucket list and that is the city of Paris. Paris is personally my favorite city in the entire world or tied at least for my favorite city in the entire world. It's a city I completely fell in love with when I was over there for um, my study abroad program. Just like walking through the streets and just soaking up the atmosphere alone is a whole attraction in and of itself. And I'm here to help you guys plan the best possible trip you can have to Paris, France. But before we get to that, I just want to say if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and comment down below. Also, don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms at Stephen Flores for Facebook and at Stephen J Flores for Twitter and Instagram. And if you like this video, want to see more videos like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for me, will ya? So yeah, without further ado, let's move on with the video. So this is going to cover a wide range of topics. And we're going to start off with when is the best time to go to Paris. Now, from my research and my own personal experience, the best would probably be from June to October. You can go in December if you want but it's gonna be excruciatingly cold and all the nice greenery in like France is gonna be gone by then so if you want to go where the temperature is not as harsh and you know where all the green spaces are gonna be like overflowing with green then I highly highly recommend going from June to October obviously in around October there's gonna be fall which is another beautiful time to go to Paris secondly what currency do they use Paris along with the other nations in the eurozone use the euro as its official currency now how about transportation how are you gonna get into Paris now there are three ways you can get into Paris and it's also coincidentally the three modes of transportation I made videos for previously and those are planes, trains, and buses. Now we're going to tackle the planes first or more specifically the airport. How do you get from the airport to the center of Paris? Now for the main airport in Paris which is Charles de Gaulle, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's called Chat de Gaulle if you like really pronounce it like really French. Make sure you know what terminal you're arriving at because there are three of them and CDGVAL is their like transportation system that can take you to the different terminals. Now if you want to take the train to the city, RERB is the best option. You're gonna to have to pay 11 euros and 40 cents for it but one thing to note is that you have to keep an eye on your belongings. There have been instances in the past where people have gotten their stuff stolen while using the train to get from Charles de Gaulle to Paris and in total it takes about 35 minutes. Now if you take a taxi it's gonna be a little more expensive but good thing that there is a flat rate and that flat rate is 50 euros if you're going on the right bank and 55 euros if you're going to the left bank. Now there's also a bus service that takes about 60 minutes to get from Charles de Gaulle to the center of Paris and there are two companies that do this one is called Roissy Bus. It costs 12.5 euros and it drops people off near Opera and Montmartre. I know I'm butchering all these names really bad but I do not speak French so like please bear with me. Now there's another company called Le Bus Direct and it drops you off at Montparnasse for 14.5 euros, the Eiffel Tower for 14.5 euros, and Paris Orly for 18 euros. Now speaking of Paris Orly that is the secondary airport of Paris and unlike Charles de Gaulle Orly actually has four terminals and there is inter-terminal transport for you to get from one terminal to the other. Now how can you get there? How can you get to the city from there? Well you have a few options. The first one is RERB. You can take the Orly Val or the you know the transportation that Orly provides to the train station then go from the station to Paris it'll set you back around 11.3 euros and it takes about 40 minutes to get there now there's also another option you can go to RERC and for that you have to take a shuttle from the airport to the RERC train station they leave about every 20 minutes and the bus from Orly to the train station costs about two and a half euros now the RER to Paris is going to take you about 40 minutes and it'll cost you about 3.9 euros and the good thing about this it takes you to strategic places all around Paris so it's perfect for budget travelers. As you can see, you'd barely pay over six euros. So, you know, it's worth it. Now for the bus option, there's this thing called the Orly bus. You can take it from any of the terminals. They leave every 10 to 20 minutes and they drop you off at, and I'm going to butcher this, the Denver Rocherau station. Yes. And it costs 7.7 .7 euros for a one-way ticket. Now, if you're taking the bus to get to Paris, there are over 10 different bus stations scattered across Paris. And most of them are easily accessible by metro, so you can get to anywhere from any of the bus stations. Check out my full buses video for a complete guide on how to book buses throughout Europe. Now, how about if you're arriving by train? Now, as you know, Paris has a bunch of different train stations that go to different parts of Europe and different parts of France. So I'm just going to list all of them for you right now. There is Gare du Nord that services Belgium, the Netherlands, and Germany. It also services Northern France and the North 
northern suburbs of Paris. There's Gare de l'Est that goes to eastern France and Germany. There's Gare d'Austerlitz that goes to central France, Toulouse and the Pyrenees. There's Gare de Bercy that has trains to Italy and Burgundy. There's Gare de Léon that has trains to southeastern France, Italy and Switzerland. There's Gare Montparnasse which goes to western and southwestern France. And Gare Saint-Lazare goes to Normandy. SNCF is the train company located in France and there's a store in every single station so it's very easy and convenient to buy tickets. Check out my Trains in Europe video for an in-depth guide on how to book trains throughout Europe. Now for accommodation, I know you guys would want to get the cheapest accommodation possible and from my research I figured out that the cheap accommodations are located in the 18th arrondissement in a district called Montmartre. Again, I am butchering the pronunciation of these names so please bear with me. Always remember to check your accommodation via Agoda and Booking.com. Make sure to get one near a train station or a subway station so that it's easy for you guys to like get everywhere in Paris. Obviously it also goes without saying that accommodation near tourist sites is going to be much higher than normal. But you can check all of that in Booking.com and Agoda and if you want tips on how to do that, head on over to my How to Book Hotels video and watch that. Now for transportation by metro, a metro ticket usually costs about 1.9 euros a journey. You can actually also buy a book of 10 which saves you about 0.3 euros per ticket. And like I said, they can be used for one journey and one journey only but that includes all like the transfers. You can also do transportation by bus, it costs 2 euros or if you want to save, you can also use train tickets here. Now in terms of walkability, I personally think that Paris is a very walkable city. I've walked throughout the entire Paris and never really felt that it was unsafe in any way. And it's nice to walk around Paris too. It's not like it's not like the things are like close to one another, but just to like soak in the atmosphere is really fun. Now one really cool thing about Paris, and I think this goes for the entire France actually, is that they actually offer discounts or some things for free if you're an EU resident under the age of 25. That's what I was able to say for most of the attractions. I know like the Arc de Triomphe was like heavily discounted or I think it was even free for like EU residents under 25. And since because of my visa, I was a temporary permanent resident. I know that's kind of an oxymoron. But yes, I was able to take advantage of that and hopefully you guys can too. Now we're going to go to what I think are the top tourist attractions in Paris. And we're going to start off with the granddaddy of them all, the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, I'm sure you all know what the Eiffel Tower is. It is that big pointy thing that's like standing in the middle of Paris. The closest stations to it are Trocadero on line 9, Bur Hakim on line 6, and Ecole Militaire in line 8. You can also take the RERC train to get to the Eiffel Tower. You're going to have to go through two security checks, one to get to the base of the Eiffel Tower and one to go up the Eiffel Tower. Tower. And I'm gonna show you guys the prices right now as you can see for the ticket with access lift to the second floor It's 16.6 .6 euros for adults 8 euros and 30 cents for the youth Infants is 4 euros and 10 cents and handicaps is 4 euros and 10 cents for a ticket to go all the way to the top It's 25.9 euros for adults 13 euros for the youth 6.5 euros for infants 6.5 euros for the handicapped and free for children under 4. For tickets with access to the stairs for the second floor, it is 10.4 euros for adults, 5.2 euros for the youth, 2.6 euros for the infant, and 2.6 euros for the handicapped and free for children under 4. Ticket with access stairs and lift to the top is 19.7 euros for adults, 9.8 euros for the youth, 5 euros for both the infants and handicapped and free for children under 12. Next thing that I'm going to talk about are Seine River Cruises. As you guys know, the Seine is the river that goes through the center of Paris and usually you can get river cruises from about 12 to 18 euros. They depart all along the river and some of them even include dinner which can be really nice if it's in your budget. But yes, just some amazing, amazing sights you can see from the Eiffel Tower to the Louvre and all of that. All from this very unique vantage point on the river which I highly recommend everybody does. Next we have the Palace of Versailles. If you guys don't know what that is, it is the amazing, amazing palace located a few minutes outside of Paris. The gardens are amazing, you know, they're like perfectly trimmed and the inside of the palace is just jaw-droppingly beautiful. The Hall of Mirrors is like unparalleled anywhere else in the world. And it's just like so amazingly beautiful and just makes you feel like a prince or princess just walking through the entire thing. And now it is open every single day except for Monday. The RERC train drops you about 10 minutes walking distance away from the um, palace gates. And the RER will cost you about 7.1 euros. But how about the palace itself? How much will that cost you? As you can see now, a palace ticket with time entry without the fountain show and musical gardens cost 18 euros. An estate of tree on ticket cost 12 euros. Now you can actually get an estate of Trianon ticket for free and it is free for those who are under 18, European Union residents under 26, school children, teachers, 
in the French establishment with the past education, disabled people, and the person accompanying them. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. Next we have the Arc de Triomphe, and I think everybody knows what that is. It's the like squarish looking thing that's like in the middle in this island in the middle, and then there are like like a hub, and there are like spokes of streets going from it. One of them being Champs Elysees. Now to get to the Arc de Triomphe, you're gonna want to go to the Chateau de Galatoire station, which are on lines one, two, six, and the RERA train. As you can see here, here are the ticket prices for skip the line rooftop tickets. It costs twelve euros for adults that are eighteen over, kids below eighteen years old, EU citizens aged eighteen to twenty-five, disabled visitors without IDs, and their carers enter for free. Next, if you want to go to Champs Elysees, which is the famous shopping street in Paris, you're gonna want to go to the same train stations that you went to for the Arc de Triomphe, which is the station of Chateau de Galatoire, lines one, two, six, and RERA. Now for everyone's favorite church in Paris, the Notre Dame Cathedral, which recently suffered a fire. I don't know if it's better already, but I think it should be open by now. Entry into the church is free, but it will cost you 8.5 euros to go up to the tower and 6 euros to go down to the crypt. You can arrive at the Saint Michel Notre Dame station from Metro Line 4 or RER A or RERB. Next up is the Louvre. I think everybody knows what the Louvre is. It's the one with the Mona Lisa and the one with like the forgot what you call the name of that statue. The one that's like I think it's called the Venus de Milo. There we go. And it's a huge huge complex of just like gallery after gallery after gallery. I think I spent like five or six hours there and didn't even get to see everything. But yes, it was pretty cool, I have to say. Now, how are the ticket prices? Well, the ticket prices, as you can see here, are for tickets purchased online, they are 17 euros. Quick entry to the museum in less than 30 minutes. But if you purchase it at the museum itself, you get a two euro discount and it's 15 euros. The Tuileries Gardens are free for anybody to go to. And of course, there is free admission for all visitors under the age of 18 or 18 to 25 years old residents of the European Economic Area who enjoy free admission to the museum year-round. Additionally, on Friday evenings from 6 p.m. to 9.45 p.m., admission to the museum is free for visitors under the age of 26, regardless of country of residence. Of course, that means the Louvre is going to be more crowded during that time, but if you want to save money, you can go then. Together, if I'm metric, you want to go to the Palais Royal Musée de Louvre station, which is for lines 1 and 7, and Pyramid for line 14. Buses number 21, 24, 27, 39, 48, 68, 69, 72, 81, and 95 all service the Louvre as well. And yeah, I don't think you can go to Paris and not go to the Louvre. So go. Next up is Musée d'Orsay. You know, that museum with the famous like clock tower that everyone takes a picture of. And the one with all the Monet paintings and the Van Gogh paintings and all of that. Pretty amazing stuff to see there. It is open every day except on Mondays. The full rate of admission is 16 euros and you get a reduced rate for accompanying persons of a younger visitor under 18 residing in the European Union without the limit of two accompanying persons per child which is 13 euros. And of course, you get free admission if you fall under the following conditions. If you're under 18 years old, if you're 18 to 25, if you're 18 to 25, but you know, you have a long-term resident of France, all of that, you can get free admission to Musée d'Orsay. And you can find Musée d'Orsay via Metro Line 12 at the station Solferino or RER Line C to the train station Musée d'Orsay. Now we're gonna talk about the food. As you guys know, Paris is known for its amazing, amazing cafes. And if you wanna experience them, the best place to go is Boulevard Saint-Germain. You can go to two of the most famous cafes cafes there, Café de Flore and Café du Mago. And my final section for this video is if you want to go to partying places. There are a bunch of different party places in Paris like Le Marais, Bastille, Oberkampf, Menil Montant and Gabetta, and many 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 other places. And you can see there are parties happening in Paris literally everywhere. And yeah, there's really something for everyone in the city. So yes, that is my Paris city travel guide. I hope this guide helped you guys plan your perfect trip to Paris. If you're watching this a few years from now, some things may change, but I think for the most part it would stay the same. And yeah, do you guys have tips for people who want to go to Paris I want to hear about them comment down below and yes I'll see you guys next week for our next video thank you so much for watching if you like the kiss subscribe and the like button down there my last videos are to my left and to my right down in the description on my social media stuff like me on Facebook follow me on Twitter follow me on Instagram until next time guys see ya